can't be used because we're over here. So we like cooperation from all the saints. Don't let your, don't let the Lord not be able to bless you because you don't want anybody over your house. You don't want that to happen, do you? Hmm? The Bible's talking about some people that were kept out of heaven. He said, when I was naked, you wouldn't clothe me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. And when I was in prison, you didn't visit. I mean, those all kind of things. He said, you just were inhospitable. And that should never be said of us. Right? Amen. And if we all pitch in and do our part, then we won't have that problem. Amen. But we'll exacerbate it if we don't want, excuse me, if we don't want to. You know what? It really is not a, not a uh, option whether we want to be hospita hospitable or not. I mean, that's, the Bible tells us we have to do that. Doesn't it? I want you to help me tonight because we're going to have a little... You know, when I used to have a, uh, one of those regular jobs, every once in a while they had what they call a come-to-Jesus meeting. Now, you all, if you haven't worked out there and with those folks, you might not know what I'm talking about. But if you have, you know what a come to Jesus meeting is. Anybody know what that is? When they said we have a come to Jesus meeting? Yeah. A come to Jesus meeting means we're going, we're going to reconcile a few things and get them fixed. Yeah. And so we would go along and things would be going on at work. And, uh, and you know what, Ron? It's time for a come to Jesus meeting. It is time for that. And for some of us, we need to come to Jesus meeting tonight, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Every once in a while, we got, we got to turn the screw and tighten up a little bit. Because we get too sloppy, we're going to be lost and go to hell, and we don't want to do that. Right? No, no we're, not, we're not going through all of this to, to be lost somehow. We're not doing that for that reason. All right? So it's all family here tonight, so I can talk to you all mean and stuff, and you won't get mad at me. You know, they say, oh, man, that guy was really tired. No, I'm not. Just a lovable guy, but every once in a while, you know, what good is a watchdog if he can't bite? All bark and no bite. And they're not much good. Titus chapter 1. Father, we pray, Lord, you'd help us tonight. Rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a little short prayer, but I expect some results. Titus chapter 1. Now we'll start at verse number 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I appointed thee. We want to concentrate on the second clause there, that thou shouldest set in order. One of the laws of thermodynamics says that anything that is in order tends to, to degenerate into chaos. Order degenerates into chaos. And I'm not quoting it precisely, but that's close enough. Anything you have, in this, and if it's in some kind of order, if it's in proper working condition, as it goes along, unless it's carefully maintained, it tends to go out of that condition and want to go into disorder. Gears that are meshing. They grind a certain amount of materials lost and eventually they fail. Right? A house. If you don't take care of getting your gutters cleaned, pretty soon you're going to have trouble. If you don't make sure that the paint every once in a while is taken care of, you're going to have trouble, right? Um, you personally, if you don't wash up, Brush your teeth, comb your hair, if you have any. If you don't do these things, what's going to happen? You're going to stink. You're going to look very dis disheveled and disorderly. Amen. For any organization, and I know many of you have you, you, you've had jobs, you know what it's like. Anytime things aren't every once in a while brought to reckon with, 
they just degenerate. That's what happens. It can be the school system. It can be a governmental agency. It can be a private agency. It can be a stockholder health, health uh, uh, enterprise. It doesn't matter. Unless you tend to it, it will fall into disrepute. That's, that's the law of nature. That's why, as a side note, that's why it's, it's uh, incredibly impossible for there ever been an evolution to take place. Order usually de degenerates. Chaos doesn't breed order. It goes just the opposite. Right? You can't take a chaotic condition and all of a sudden you get a big bang and because that bang occurred, now you've got order. We start with nothing, we have a big bang, and now all of a sudden everything lines itself up. The probability of that happening is so minuscule that it's not even worth mentioning. In fact, one man described it as being as likely, man, the, the, the condition of man and his, his existence to come out of a, 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 a situation that was totally chaotic is about as likely as somebody taking a hand grenade and throwing it into a garbage or a, a scrap metal yard and a 747 pop up when you're done. That's the same thing. So you can't, you won't get uh, order out of disorder. You get disorder out of order. If you don't keep order, it'll go into disorder. Order won't naturally progress out of disorder. In your own homes. If you don't keep order in your house, your house can degenerate. Right? If you don't watch what things are going on, then pretty soon it's going, it's going to take you under, right? Your own personal life. If you don't keep it going, then eventually it's going to degrade. It will go down. You have to pray, right? You have to read your Bible. You have to fast from time to time. You, there's, a, there's things you have to do in order for you to maintain spiritual condition. If you don't do that, then you're, you will deteriorate. That's the way it works. And that's true with all the other things. It's got to be true for the church, too. If every once in a while we don't tend to ourselves, we'll degenerate. And we don't want to do that. Amen. Amen. Order, and I mean, as with anything this size, it just requires every once in a while that we come down certain lines so that we don't find ourselves being undone by little things. We don't want that to happen. And we want, especially, as it's come to my attention, I guess every now and again, and especially tonight, so I thought I'd talk about it, our children's behavior. All right? Now, i got children, and I've had them. In fact, all my children were raised here. Every last one of them. I still got one that's really a child. Well, he's not here. He's close to an adult. He's 17 and working on 18. But the rest are 18 or older. They're all grown except for one. Little Gina. Little Miss Gina. Amen. So I'm in this with you. But I'm just telling you, me, all of us, that we take heed to our children's behavior, don't we? Amen. We don't want it to be said that the children of Springfield are bad. We didn't have that reputation and we're not going to get it. We didn't have that reputation and we're not going to start getting it. And, and if they have gotten a little out of hand, then we need to bring them back in hand. Amen. 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 Now, let, let, me, let me be quite frank about this. I don't think our children are desperados and evil and wicked. I'm not saying that. And I'm talking about all of you. I'm talking about mine yours, too. But their behavior, we can't tolerate or abide them going outside of what they should be doing and excusing that. We can't. I mean, there's a spot to take care of that. And talking not always is the way to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Having a long conversation and time out doesn't always get the picture. They didn't bring anything into focus. There's, there's a soft spot that helps bring things into focus. A couple of soft spots. And we can bring things into focus real quick by using those soft spots. Can't we? We don't want our children, and the mind included, if mine act up, you tell me. And I promise you I'll do something about it. I can't afford to have naughty children. I just can't, I can't afford it. I don't have time for it. I really don't. I don't have time for that. 
I got I got grown folks like Sister Becky says when she had asked too many grown folks in my I got grown folks in my house. But they are going to do what I want them to do. And if they're too grown for that, they're too grown to live in my house. If you're going to be that grown, then maybe you ought to find your own place. If you're that grown, now I give them a little more latitude when they get old, obviously. Obviously, because I can't treat them like they were when they're three years old. You can't, you can't get by with that. that. That's a little foolish. But at the same time, I don't care if you're 100 years old, I'm still your daddy. If I'm still alive and you're 100 years old, whatever, any of my children here, I'm still your daddy. And you always remember that. If I had to take my cane and smack your foolishness. If I got all, if I got all false teeth, I might take them out and throw them at you. But wake up, you better, don't play with me like that. Amen. We want our children to obey. And by obey, that's just what it means, obey. If they won't obey you, you don't have them under control. You don't have them under control. You don't have them under control if they won't obey. If they don't do what you say, if your children don't fear you enough to do what you say, you don't have them under control. Amen. And it's up to you to bring them into control. That's your whole responsibility. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something else. There's not a saint, not an adult in this building that should not be able to talk to your child and tell them to do something, and they should do it. Amen. Even if the, that person happens to be wrong, or even if they think it's unfair, or blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. They're told they need to do it. Amen. That goes for mine, that goes for yours. Yeah. It's come to Jesus' time. Amen. And we should not be getting off upset, hot around the collar, all blue in the face because somebody talked to your child. Amen. But they did you a favor. And even if they were wrong, so what? It's a, the world out there is a cruel place. And I guarantee you, if that's the only wrong they get, they do well. Amen. And they need to learn that hey, everything ain't going to be guns and, or else I say carnations and roses. It might be guns and roses. It ain't going to be carnations and roses. There's going to be some hard times out there. So bad things happen to good people, good things happen to bad people. And our children need to understand that. Amen. Amen. Their children shouldn't be ripping and running and carrying on. And somebody can't talk to them and say, stop. And you, you. My mommy said, I don't have to do what you say. She told me at the dinner table. What? Really? Your mommy needs to repent. Now, if there's an issue, and, you know, and it happens sometimes, if somebody said something, thought something, and they were a little harsh or too hard, that happens in a group this size, what do you expect? That's going to happen. But what you need to tell that child is the same thing you tell them when they come home from school dealing with the teacher. You know what? You, you live in a world, in a hostile world. You live in a world that's really kind of against you. You live in a world that everything's not going to go your way. So you know what you need to do? You need to learn how to deal with it. You need to learn how to deal with it. Amen. Maybe she was wrong. Maybe he was wrong. But you know they meant right. Amen. Amen. Like God, when your children have a little trouble at school, you stand them up there and drag the teacher by the throat? Oh. No, uh-uh. I'm not playing that. You shouldn't play that. And it's especially true around here, isn't it? That's right. Amen. These children should obey. Amen. Should they? Don't tolerate your children giving your Sunday school teachers a hard time. Amen. Giving the saints a hard time. Giving the preachers a hard time. Amen. Giving anybody a hard time. Right? We love the children. You know we do. We rent boats for them. We rent horses for them. We try to find all kinds of things for them to do. Maybe we don't do as good a job as we could. We acknowledge that. But we try. We try. But the one thing we can't tolerate is bad kids. And I don't use that term trouble. We don't want that. We do not want bad children. We do not want to raise brats. We're not going to do it. Your child, if you tell them it should be so trained disciplined, if they walk down this aisle and tell them sit down, they should sit down on the floor. 
Well, they will. Now, we're not talking about telling some uh, teenager, large child. You tell them to sit down, you expect them to go find a seat. But a little child, won't, probably won't, if they're drill trained, they won't think about it. You sit down, plop. Yeah, and stay there. Don't get up till I tell you. And you five and six times, you got to keep telling them. Shame on you. One time is too many. We got a we got a remedy for that. I'm not talking about brutalizing the children. I'm talking about taking advantage of them. But I'm talking about keeping them trained. So oh, I don't want to talk about that tonight. Too bad. I'm talking about it. Amen. Love you, but too bad. There's no need to saw up down the revelation chart. We can't get our children acting crazy. Amen. Amen. They shouldn't be sleeping in church if they're if they're school age. Amen. And that's long been we've long held that. The school age, you shouldn't be sleeping in church. Why are they sleep? Why are they so tired? Why are they so sleepy? Wake them up! There's a wall back there. We used to have them stand back there. You remember? They stand back there. When they get tired of standing, they wake up, they'll come back. You come back to see them. They're standing back there by the wall. Till you wake up. You sleepy? Go run some water on your face. Hey, now, don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. I said, don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. I'll say, it, I'll say it ten times to you, say amen. Don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. Don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. That's four times, isn't it? You want some more? Don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. Don't let them sit there and go to sleep on you. Wake them up. You shouldn't have to wake him up from the pulpit. You should do that long before we get there. Amen. Why should we have to call somebody's name out? That's your responsibility. Amen. That's your child. You will let them go to sleep in school. Amen. It's not that much time we spend here. Yeah, it does infringe on them a little bit. But they'll be the better for it to pay attention. Amen. Amen. Well, Ron, you mad at me? No, I'm mad at the devil. Amen. No, you know I love you. You know I'm crazy about you. every last one of you. You know that. You know that. But we can't. We can't put up with with foolishness, right? We dare not put up with foolishness. Amen. We don't want to raise children that under the old judgment would have been stoned to death. Take them out there. Just make them stand there, and then start throwing rocks at them until you kill them. You almost want to write in the stone appearance, huh? <laughs> Amen. Look, I've been a parent. I know what it's like. It's not easy. Oh, it's just it's a struggle. Sometimes you don't know what to say, how to say it, this and that, blah blah blah. But one thing you can demand is obedience, right? I mean, we don't have to negotiate our way through all of this. We understand that children they don't get to do what other people do. We know all that comes into play. We know all that. Well, brother, at least we're going to obey, right? And it makes it a lot easier to do nice things for children to obey than hard head and muckle heads. And folks like that's hard to do stuff for somebody's knucklehead. You're a knucklehead. And it's worth shit if you're a knucklehead and I tell you, your mama, she don't know anything about it, I tell you, daddy, man, oh, then you're stressing us out. You're keeping us up. You got stomachs churning. Man. Got to breathe a little fire. Now, if you don't, if you're not going to do it, then we have to come to you and tell you to do it. That's all it's to it. Get them under subjection, right? Now let your children just sit back there and read books and magazines and play with PSPs and all that. And while the church service going on, what's that? They're gonna bring in magazines and, and novels and read them in the in the service. Come on now. Now, if, now look, we understand if they have to do homework, but we try to make provisions for that. But even then, you need to watch it. Lord have mercy. But you don't want your children coming in here and reading on the edge of night. Is that a soap opera thing? <laughs> on the edge of the night, huh? Lord have mercy. Amen. And you know what? Bad bad behavior is contagious. It's, it, it, it's, 
people, one, one, one of them get it and the others the rest will catch it. Amen. Amen. That's why when they come to church, we try to dress them in, a, in an orderly way. And I'm not saying that to come in a suit and tie and all that. You know I've never said that. But they shouldn't come in and look in any other kind of way because it just, it's, a, it's a way of showing some respect to the house of God, number one. And number two, people act like they dress. I'm not saying that's a, that's a truism across the board, but you watch what I'm saying. When they're sloppy, they act sloppy. When they come in dressed nice and neat, they don't want to get out and just do anything. I, these are my good clothes. I can't do all that right now. But they come dressed in the old kind of way they don't want to do anything. Now, we got a little place over there. We, we, we understand the children. So we come let them play next door. We understand that. But you still can't whiz by here and knock just a uh, 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 crab down when you're trying to go out. Up in some old saint, run between the legs, you can't, can't do that. You see a child going to stop them. It's how quiet it got in here. Amen. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be disorderly if we just let it go on. And maybe you have too long. Maybe I have. So forgive me. We ain't letting it go on no farther though. Amen. All right? We just draw the line right here. Amen. All right? Amen. We're going to be God with saints. Amen. I said we. we. I got one. I'm going to work on it. Do whatever I got to do. But you're going to do your part too, aren't you? Amen. Amen. We do not want naughty children. Do not. When we get people to come in here, visitors, we don't want the children turn around and looking at them and staring at them and all that sort of thing, making them feel uncomfortable. And we do get some people that are, are, are dressed very strangely. We get all kinds of things. You know that. But still, it's not their place to just turn around and stare at them. Right? Keep an eye on your children. And when we get down to play, you tell those children, close their eyes. Hear me? You, you, the mother, the father, whatever you are, you, the daughter, whatever, whatever your status is, if they're sitting with you and they're not related, you tell them, close their eyes. And every once in a while, you look over and make sure their eyes are closed. When I, when I walk down these aisles sometimes, I'm walking down to see the children got their eyes closed. That's what I'm doing. And sometimes they're looking at me, and I know they're not supposed to be looking at me. How are you supposed to see me? You're not supposed to see me. I see you. You're not supposed to see me. Children, I'm supposed to see you. You're not supposed to see me. If I can see that you see me, then something's wrong, you see. Yeah, right. Yeah. Unless you got eyes in the back of your head, you're not going to see me. Unless you're using a mirror. But even then, you got to have your eyes closed. Oh, that's, un that's unacceptable. We're going to have to do a little better, that's all. And parents, all you got to do is kind of look up and see if your child's got their eyes closed. That's all I gotta do. If you take, if everybody takes care of their own children, we're gonna get shaped, right? Amen. I want everybody to say amen. If, amen. Let's try one more time with a hearty amen. 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 Sound good? Let's do it, right? We got some, we got some sisters in here that don't have children, but they should be able to tell your children what to do. They're grown, they're adults. Oh, yeah. You ain't never had no children. So what? How many did Paul have? I said, how many children did Paul have? How much? How many wives did Paul have? But he told us how to live with wives, and he told us how to raise children. If he can do it, then they can do it too. Well, you know, I, I, I just got to watch my children. Yeah, that's the problem. You say you got to, but you ain't. I know I'm using bad language. I'm trying to make a point here. My throat is dry. You know I don't walk around with one of these things, but I'm, uh, you know. Pardon me. I am tired, and I am angry with the devil. And I'm going to get him. Well, he's going to, I know he's going to, but I'm going to get a little, I'm going to get over on him a little bit tonight. Amen. Keep an eye on your youngsters. Yeah? We love them. Amen. But, look, you know, you're not going to do all the training here in this building. You're going to be on their own. And you need to start with the little bitty things. 
I didn't know his son tried to train him while in the womb. You, you, you're talking about little youngsters that can't hardly talk. But you can tell them no. And they'll start understanding that quite quick. They're smarter than you give them credit for. I'm not talking about a two-day-old baby. I'm not talking about that. But when they get to be seven, eight, nine months, come on now. Yeah? What, what brother? Oh. Andre. We better, we better watch our children, saints. We don't, we don't want, we don't want folks to say our children naughty, do we? Oh, no bad children. Those are bad children. Those children over there are bad, 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 bad. Well, yeah, we got some soft spots. Take care of that. Some soft spots. And, and look, you're gonna have to use some wisdom. We got some fair, complexed children. You know how the law is. So you can pour out your vengeance on Friday night. And by Monday morning, they ain't going to see a thing. Use this. Use this. Use this. Right? We're not, and we're not trying to make marks on them. We understand it. But we sure want to light a little fire under them. We got to get their attention. We got to get their attention. And all that talking and time out, sometimes they're, not, they're, they're looking at you like, what? <laughs> What is that all about? Amen. Amen. So it's time for us to clamp down, parents. Amen. Don't let your children sit in here and play games Amen. while the service is going on. Here. Tic tac toe, text messaging. Oh, take that food from. Give me that thing. Amen. Give it here. Amen. Just give it here. I mean, what are you bring it to church for anyway? Amen. Well, I mean, why, what is church for if you're going to bring it here? And they sit around and read magazines and, 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 and chew gum. Come on now. What is this? Amen. We love God. Amen. We try and do the right thing. Right. We want these children to be in a position to when they get old, they have enough discipline to transfer what they've learned in their home to serving God. Amen. But if they're undisciplined and wild and loose, they're not going to do it. They're not going to know how. Most of our children, when they go into the military, if they should decide to do so, they have very little problem. They skate through it. Then the other boys are sitting up there, and sometimes girls are sitting there crying all night because they got to say yes, sir, or no, sir. Can't always stand it. Somebody's all up in their face, all on the grill, talking about their mama, their daddy, their uncle, their auntie, their whole family. How ugly they are, how bad their breath is, and you do what I told you to do. And they just start crying. Tears just flowing down. I can't stay here. But I children don't have that big a problem. Because they learn young to say yes sir, no sir, don't they? Amen. Amen. Don't you, you know, we train our children, we still do that, right? Amen. We still train our children to say yes sir, no sir, right? Amen. Somebody said we're supposed to. No, we better be. We better be. Amen. And we don't start that when they're 16. We start that when they learn how to talk. Right? Well, the first thing is you teach them, uh, they say, they learn how to say no. They say, no, sir. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And by the time they're going to school in kindergarten, they know it is second nature. Amen. Yeah. Nah. Uh-uh. Are you for real? Teach them how to say yes, sir, no, sir. That breeds a certain amount of respect for you, as well as authority. Amen. When they get to be grown, I mean, you know, make a big deal out of it. I don't. Unless I don't feel like you're saying it quite right, then I might still say, it. excuse me? Yeah, I'm still your daddy. I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. That's yes, sir. But I say when they get to be grown, uh, you know, you don't make that big a deal out of them because we know by that time, so I'm just keep doing it anyway. <laughs> you know, second nature, you don't even care. Yes, sir. No, sir. I still say yes, sir, no, uh, 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 to my father and mother. I'm not going to say it every time, but I say it. That's a big deal to me. My dad called me today. I think I said yes, sir, to him, I think. I don't know. I don't know if he had the right numbers, but it probably was, but the probably, probably was. I said, you know who you talking to? <laughs> he hemmed all around. I said, it's a little runny. Oh, 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 I was trying to call so, 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 so. 
I want to know if you saw it. How am I going to stop thinking to myself? I'm at church in Springfield. How am I going to see her? He said, well, if you're running out of before I do, tell her I'm looking for her. Yeah. He told me one of my sisters, right? Yeah. Okay, Dad. Yes, sir. But I said, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. No, sir. No. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My mother and father. I don't have a problem with that. That doesn't hurt me. In fact, I said to people I don't even know. I sometimes have people that are younger than me. That doesn't bother me. What's the big deal? And I don't demand that even from the saints. People say yes or no to me. And sometimes they slip up and don't say it, they feel all bad. I don't, I'm not running around demanding that. Say yes, sir, to me. I am the great one. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it again. Say it three times. Make sure you got it right. I don't go around with requiring that. <laughs> but I tell you what. I don't want you children running around here calling me Ron. Amen. Oh, come on, Ron. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put a handle on that. Amen. Put a handle on that. But, uh, not because, and I don't know if any of you have, and I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that would be disrespectful in my mind. Right. Not from just because of my position. I would say I don't even let the neighborhood children do that. Now, my neighbors used to do that across the street and everything. And they would, they would, they would tell my children to call them by their first names. But when their children try to call me by my birthday, they say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be Mr. Ron. Or Mr. Kevin. But I, I'm not going to be Ron to you. Not 11-year-old child. I'm just not going to be Ron to you. Okay? I'm not Ron to you. I am not. And so they all learn. All my neighbors and little children. Hello, Mr. Kevin. How are you, Mr. Kevin? And I, and I told my children to call their parents by the same way. They didn't want that. No, call me this, call me that. What am I going to do? Don't call me ma'am. Make me feel old. Make those children say yes sir and no sir. Amen. Yes ma'am and no ma'am. Amen. If they don't do it, find a way to get them to do it. Right. Amen. You with me? Amen. Now none of these children have to go to a bathroom five times during service. Amen. Unless they got a, 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 a problem with their glands or something. Well, the school wouldn't permit that. You're getting up every six minutes and going out. I got no bathroom. Can I have a whole pass? I got no bathroom. Can I have a whole pass? I got no bathroom. Can I have a whole pass? They call you and say, Does this child have a problem? This child have a bladder problem? I tell you what, we'll give this child a day off. You take him to the doctor and have him examined. To see if this child is bad. If he doesn't have a bad problem, we're not letting him out of class six times. Right? That goes for our children here. They're trying to sneak out of church. They just want to go out there and have a good, little good time. So you put the handle, put the clamp on that, right? Okay? They put the clamp on that. When they want to get up, just run around and go out. Don't let them play you. Don't let them play you. They're playing you. They're playing you like a cheap fiddle. They got you and they stay strumming all the way. Mama let me go out. Next time I ask daddy, I got in church five times, get me three drinks. Talk to my friends when I'm out there. Look out the window. Play over the fellowship hall. Ha 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 ha. You been played hard. You played hard. You played hard. You been played hard. And then when they get older, now we're trying to go, oh my baby, oh my baby. Oh, my baby, don't want to be saved. Oh, my baby. We got to do, we gotta, we gotta do we, what we can do while they're young. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So don't let them get up and go out. Where's your responsibility, parents? We got people back there on the wall. They'll be watching them. But even at that, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have to do that. You should say, stop. Where are you going? Where are you going? You just went out. Why you got to go back him again? Get back over and sit down. And you better not wet. Right. Better not do it. Amen. You go out there and they go to the bathroom and they go right around that drinking fountain and load up on water. Yeah. Had about a nine or ten second drink. 
Then they come back in there and 10 minutes later, I can't use it, I can't use it, I can't use it, I can't use it. Yeah. So I tell you what, I'm going out with you. This is the last time you're going out. Let's see. If we don't correct our children, we're going to be in trouble. You guys got in trouble when those children were grown. And then the problem wasn't so much what they were doing. I mean, that was an issue. But the problem with Eli was, hey, you saw him doing it on your body. You let them do it. You, had, you, you should have dealt with it. They had dealt with it, been over with. But he saw what they were doing, but he ignored it. He let it go by. Amen. We, can't, we can't let God bless. God not going to bless us if we just let things go by, right? Right. Amen. So our children have to be in subjection. We love them. We want the best for them. Man, you know, when, when they graduate, we have a big shin dig for them, and we do this and that and the other. We let them march down the aisle, we recognize them, and I think that's worthy. I think that's a great thing. We probably got about a 98% graduation rate. About 98%. I haven't calculated it, and maybe even closer than that. I mean, we haven't had but a very few that didn't, and some of those that didn't went back and got their degrees, I mean, their diplomas, their high school diplomas after that. So we got a very high graduation rate. We appreciate that. Amen. And you know, if you do right, the saints will take care of you. If you do the right thing, you grow up around here and you stay safe and do, and do what you're supposed to do, you know the day you want to get married. Brother, you, you can't find better people. I mean, you get all kind of gifts and they'll shower you and you don't know, you know, have good things. And I sure do know that. They know that. But if you're hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious, brother, who wants to do anything with somebody like that? Even the police won't want to do something with somebody like that. Outside of knocking upside their head with a, one of those little clubs, they get on the little metal things they got, and that thing's terrible. I mean, Chris Dent got one of them, brother, our, our, our deputy sheriff. Man, he take that thing and throw it out, shoot. Oh, man. It's, I don't know what, what it's made of, but it's not anything that's going to give. It's not like a switch. You know what I'm saying? If we don't raise our children right, somebody else has got something for them. Right? Right? It, it, it may be the, the police officer. It may be one of their friends who just get mad at them. And they get, a, they get into a fight and try to kill them. Say, so that, that never happens. Oh, it happens all the time. My cousin had a friend, and I thought this guy was my friend too. But my cousin had a friend in Detroit there, and uh, his name was uh, 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 Richard. Sorry about that, brother Richard. We called him Dick, though. His name that was a nickname. Now my uncle, my uncle Bill, did not like this boy, not personally, but Dick was a criminal. He's, he's a gangster. He was a show enough gangster. And uh, but when he met me. He and I clicked off pretty good, for whatever reason. We got along real well. All right? But when I came back from Detroit and I came up here, a few, I guess it was two or three years, and I'm not talking about after I was little, man, I used to go back and spend the whole summers and all that, so I, I would get there all summer long. But when I, uh, I, I came back one year and my cousin called me, or somebody told me, I can't remember what, but said, he... And there was another guy named Welch. We were all supposed to be friends. Welch lived on the same street as Billy Range. You all remember him. He used to be up in Jackson, or still in Jackson, Billy. They all lived on the same street. And so he said that they were driving down one of the freeways there, Chrysler Freeway 4, one of the freeways there. And Dick, and I think it was Welch, got into an argument. Dick opened the door on the freeway, on the freeway, and tried to push him out. I'm not talking about playing. I mean, he tried to kick him out the car while they're traveling 65, 70 miles an hour down that freeway. That's the kind of guy he was. I'm like, man, I could, I could hardly believe it. I'm like, what? He said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
oh yeah, and they want me to come up there and get into a fight and all this kind of, I mean, there was a whole bunch of stuff, but all I'm telling you is this, if you don't raise your children right, stuff can happen, Amen. and you'll have to live a long time before you ever forget about it, Amen. and you may not ever, now if you've done the best you can, then that's all you can do, sometimes when we do the best we can, and we, what else can you do, we do what we can do, it is, it's, it, you know, we can't make people be saved. But don't excuse yourself while he's turning a little. Here? Yeah? Y'all still love me? Yeah. That was kind of weak, too. Y'all still love me? Yeah. Amen. I see the little children, they love, they love to go here and there, and, and that's fine and dandy. As long as the people that, the underneath whom they have, uh, who, have who has jurisdiction over the time, keep an eye on them. I don't have any problem with that. Oh. Amen. But they got to make a mind. Children need a mind. Amen. You hear me, children? You hear me, children? A little louder now. I can't hear you! That's how they say it themselves, isn't it? Let me get in there. I've heard horror stories. I didn't go in, I was close. I was, I was in the nine there, and I was close. You all know the story. But I was very close. I wasn't running. I was, I was ready to go ahead and do what I had to do. Either Marines or, or Air Force, Army, I didn't know what I was going to do. Maybe I was going, but I was going to some branch. I was going to fight. I just, I, this is my country. I just said to myself, I, don't, I wasn't born a Canadian. I was born close to Canada, but I wasn't born in Canada. Yeah. I am not a Canadian. I don't run around, although I do say A every once in a while. That's not how I normally talk. You know what I'm saying, A? And I'm not running. I'm not running away. But brother, our children should be, have a certain amount of discipline. So if they do, it's not a problem. I mean, when they tell the children to stand up, they stand up. And tell them to sit down and sit down. And tell them to hurt their eyes. Let me be honest with you. I have more trouble with a child misbehaving than I do with one getting bad grades. I mean, if a child gets poor grades, there may be a number of reasons why. We can help. We may be able to fix that. But if a child is just a misbehaving, just a misbehaving, that's trouble. Now, those things sometimes go hand in hand. But if I had a choice, we can find the sweetest child. Maybe they're just not comprehending or whatever. We can work with that. We can work with that. Even if, they get, if they're flagging everything. But they're sweet and they're trying to work, we can work with that. We can say, Lord, let's pray for this child. Help them, Lord. So on. And we'll take them and get them a tutor or something. We can do something about that. But when you get a child to misbehave and don't we'll talk back to the teacher, all that kind of foolishness, that's out of order. Ready to go home? All right, then I'll keep preaching. Amen. Don't let your children talk back to you. Yeah? Look, I can be the time where if you talk back, you got in trouble. You bet, you bet not even sit up under your breath, too. I, I try to get away with that a few times. You know, you walking away, you steamed, too. You didn't like what was said to you. You steamed. You're hot and bothered. What did you say, boy? Man? What did you say? I said, what did you say? You said something. Really said. Said what did you say? Scared to death to repeat that. You ain't saying that. You're not going to say that. Back in my day, go ahead. Oh, man. Pop. In my day, we could get problems in school. I got a few. But I didn't come home and say, ah, mama, what happened to school today? I didn't come home and tell my dad, hey, they paddled me today. Huh? Why you get a paddle? Oh, man. Yeah, I didn't say nothing. I just took the paddle. You, you said, bend over. Grab that chair. You hold over the chair. It's kind of stiff. Oh man, oh man, you know it's coming. 
Nosa. You don't remember that? Whack! Then you hear that fool's just crack. There'd be some spine tingling going all up in the back. Pull up! You got to be able to come back down. You know your friends are standing there. bad enough to have tears coming out. But you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it in front of them. You're mad. You're angry. You get another one. Whack! You get one more. You know it. Whack! For some of us, for some folks, it's the rest of the week, but we had two guys at the high school, well, middle school and high school, we had a couple teachers that played in the NFL. Now, back in those days, to see a 300-pound guy was a big, we're talking about us, we weren't, we were a little guy, and we had one guy that played for the Buffalo Bills, Mr., uh, I can't remember his name, and we had one that, uh, Mr. Arnold, he played for some team. What would Arnold play for? You remember him? Okay. But they were big dudes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Their arms look like our thighs. So huge. Bro, <laughs> you all remember Brother Brian, right? I don't know what he was doing. I was cutting up and carrying on in Mr. Arnold's class. And he told them, I guess he gave them a warning and they didn't heed. And he went through the class. And uh, we, the nickname is Sonny. That was Brian's nickname. Sonny. Sonny got a, got a, got, got a, got a paddling from Mr. Arnold. <laughs> now, let me tell you something about Brian. Brian was a hard guy. I'm telling you the truth. I remember going by his house in middle school and he was lifting 100 pound dumbbells with one hand. He, he, I mean, he's a bad boy. He's my friend, but he's a bad boy. Mr. Arnold brought, brought him to tears. <laughs> yeah. And that's what needs to happen to maybe some of my children. They need to be brought to some tears. I remember one night one of my children just got out of my skin. He was getting a little old and he thought he was all that. He just got out of my skin. Jonah will tell you, I got me a piece, I went out and bought me a piece of wood, a board, all oh, about that long. I got, my, I got my saber saw, my jigsaw, and I got my, my design tools, and I went and I drew this device, and I shrunk it down as I came down to a handle. I'm talking about that day. It was dark outside. And I was out there with my jigs. When I got it like I wanted, I got my hole saws. And I drilled some holes in it. And I got my little sanding things and I sanded it off. When I got done with it, it looked just like, well not just like, but it was a fairly decent replica of the Board of Education. <laughs> that night, that very night, after I was outside for several hours making that thing, I administered it in a most professional way. We have peace and quiet for a while on that front. Or that back, shall we say. Remember one night, I've told you this story before, remember one night my children, I don't know what they were doing, but they got under Jones' skin. Now you know Jones is a very patient person. 
You see her somehow. She just said, that's the way she really is. She's not putting on the front. She's like that. She is very pretty. So she's, got a, she's not like me. She's got a very long lick. Her fuse is long. But they licked that bad boy about midway. <laughs> Wait. And that thing was sh- and Man, she got a switch My Lord. and beat all of them. <laughs> one <Amen>. by one. <laughs> she, had, she had the whole house crying. All of them got When she looked at me, I said, Wait a minute, Joe. I promise I've been behaving. You don't need to bother me. I haven't done anything. I promise you, I <laughs> She had them all crying. Every last one of them. Shedding tears. You go in this room, that one's crying. This room, this room, this room. All of them. I think we have about, we might have five at a time. All of them were crying. She went through all of them. She looked at me. I said, oh, no. I said, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, I ain't done nothing. You don't have to bother me. I'm good. I'm good. Maybe that's not what we have to do. Go through the whole house. I don't deserve this spanking. Maybe you don't deserve the one I'm getting ready to give you now, but you, I'm, but, but you know you've got to look for some stuff. Don't act like you haven't been getting away. This will make up for the one you didn't get. You never once in a while you need to go to those children's room. You need to go up beneath the, underneath their sheets and in their, in their drawers and, and in their closets and all of that. Check what they're doing. Amen. See where they're going on the internet. Check them out. Amen. We don't want to raise desperados. Amen. Here, when they come in here, we don't want to rip and run over here, do we? Amen. We try to let them play over there. They don't need to rip and run in here. They don't. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Shake this leg. Amen. We love our children. Yeah. And they know it. But we can't let them get by. We can't get soft. Amen. Can we? No, no, sir. Amen. All right. I've said what I had to say tonight. So I'm going to stop. Everybody that doesn't have children saying, oh, thank God. Huh? Thank the Lord. Oh, they're a blessing. We love them. They're a lot of fun when they're trying to be fun. They'll come back every once in a while, take you out to dinner, buy stuff for you, treat your own nice if you do them right. But if you let them do whatever they want to do and act the kind of way they want to act, then when they get old, that's what they're going to keep doing. Am I right? You're right. Yeah. And I'm only right because the Bible's right. Amen. That's the only reason why. If I didn't say what the Bible said, then I'd be in trouble. Amen. All right. Shall we stand?